Hi, I'm Seth from NVIDIA, and today we're going to be looking at some common gamer myths and pain points and using system latency to explain what's really going on. System latency is the time from when your mouse button is clicked to when the resulting pixels appear on screen. We're going to be looking at high latency, medium latency, and low latency systems together with CSGO legend and Valorant streamer Jordan Nothing Gilbert, as well as a high-speed camera to see what's really going on. So Jordan, thanks for having us. So, what competitive games have you been playing recently? Lately, I've most been playing Valorant. Obviously, I come from a CSGO background, but the novelty of playing a new game has been fun and a different challenge for me. So what role does precision play in competitive games like Valorant? Precision plays a massive role because, you know, aside from trying to outplay people positionally or strategically, if you can't actually finish off the frag, then all the positions and strategic things you could do don't really matter. Every gamer I've heard that wants to compete at a high level wants precision. Does responsiveness deliver precision? I think to a certain degree, responsiveness equals precision because you want your mouse to feel like an extension of your hand. And if everything that your mouse is doing is responsive, that means everything at the other end of your mouse is going to be mimicked on the screen. And I can immediately tell when it's not doing what I want it to do. So what is hit registration in games? When I put my cursor on an opponent and I click, did it actually register when I shot while the crosshair is on their body? or did somehow they magically evade my bullet. Let's put that to the test. Let's figure out how system latency impacts some of the biggest myths and feelings we get as competitive gamers. In this test, we're going to find out how much system latency impacts hit registration. As I'm testing this, I'm going to be running across garage doors, and nothing is going to have no idea when I'm crossing. Go for it. Wait, let me turn on the white noise. You said white noise right now because it, you know Seth doesn't want me cheating here in his keyboard clicks. This is the medium latency system, running at about 33 milliseconds of system latency and about 144 hertz. <laughs> that looked on, come yeah. on. <laughs> Give me that. All right, should we check the high speed? I'm down. We feel like you just hit your shot. So let's take a look and actually see what happened here. So here at the bottom, that green light will turn off when you actually press your mouse button. Okay, so I'm so on him, I'm on him, I'm on him. And then it's off. And my crosshair is on him. My dot is on him, <laughs> Seth. Exactly. So you, you actually hit him. Blasphemy! Now let's take a look at the high latency system, running at about 58 milliseconds of system latency at 60 hertz. That was going to the high speed camera. So here we go. We're, yeah, so the green light goes off right so, there. See, the, that's the middle of his body. This one is about 55 milliseconds, which was enough time for Brimstone to cross the doors and for us to actually miss that shot. I didn't miss. You didn't miss. You didn't <laughs> hit it. So actually what's happening <laughs> here, the system latency is affecting the shot in two different ways. Since the frame rate is lower, our CPU side has longer latency, which means that the mouse is being sampled at a slower rate. Additionally, what we're also seeing here is a delayed view of the game world. So in reality, Brimstone is actually about 55, 60 milliseconds ahead of what we're actually yeah. seeing. So those two things are working against us. We're visually getting late information, and due to the frame rate and the higher CPU latency, we're actually, our shot is going into the game state at a later time. All right, so now you're on 360 hertz, 360 FPS, super low system latency, just Can't tested. hear anything. <laughs> Easy. Ooh. Blinked. All right, so that shot was a little bit easier, I think. Yeah, it felt like I could have kind of went to recline mode and just kind of clicked without much effort. Timings just seemed easier. You can see how the crosshair barely moves before the shot goes in. So that's, that's low system latency for you. It allows you to actually be able to hit what you're shooting at. It, it just feels and looks so much smoother. Let's jump into our second test, Peeker's Advantage. What is Peeker's Advantage? Peeker's Advantage to me is essentially, if I'm holding an angle, the person who swings in and tries to peek me essentially has an advantage. How does Peeker's Advantage impact competitive gaming? When you outposition somebody and they don't know you're there, for instance, you would think, 
hey, I should have an advantage on reaction time, for instance, of them coming around the corner and I should get this shot first and get the frag. Well, a lot of times with peeker's advantage, what is essentially happening is even if you're holding one of these kind of off angles and someone comes into a corridor, they kind of appear on your screen in a way that seems quicker than they should and you kind of have trouble leading the shot. So the person who ends up peeking into you that should be at a disadvantage is actually at an advantage. What do players typically attribute peeker's advantage to? The net code of a game. Things that we don't truly understand as gamers, but you kind of just like put a vague term to you, just like the game dev. They just, they just don't have a good enough engine or something, and that's why there's peeker advantage. Often gamers attribute peeker's advantage only to game net code or network latency. However, let's look at the role of system latency and peeker's advantage. In this first test, we're going to be looking at our low latency system peeking into our medium latency system. And so when we actually peek through like a wide swing, you'll get to see the major difference. Wow, yeah, yeah. The wide swing, you like almost see his whole body when he sees like your shoulder. Yep. And this is where you traditionally see Peeker's advantage exemplified, right? At that full speed wide swing. And what's interesting here is the network latencies are exactly the same, both about 20 milliseconds of network latency. The angle advantage is the same, we're equidistant from that angle. So the only difference here is system latency. Next up, we have our medium latency system peeking into our low latency system. You look at that. Yep, crosshairs are both. You've up. almost neutralized peeker's advantage. Like that's at least even, if not favoring the lower latency system, holding the angle. Right. What's happening in peeker's advantage is that imagine both the systems are getting the location of each other at the same time to the CPU. However, it just takes longer for that information to be rendered on the higher latency system. And so really what you're seeing with your eyes, and what the camera is seeing here, is just a later version of the world. This is all I needed to see because like the fact, because that's the biggest advantage in, in, for instance, we're looking at Valorant, is when someone's holding an angle and you wide swing into a corridor, they generally just seem like lightning fast. So essentially, if your system latency is lower than your opponent's, typically you can play Peeker's advantage to your benefit, Correct. whether it's holding or attacking. Next, we're going to have our low latency system peak our high latency system. 60 FPS, 60 Hertz is roughly, in this case, about 70 milliseconds at end system latency compared to the 15 milliseconds at end system latency on the low latency system. It's 55 milliseconds of additional peakers advantage that the low latency system is providing in this case. Oh my gosh. It looks like a full model almost. All right, so now we're watching, I just did, I peaked with the 60 Hertz, 60 FPS system. I think in this case, I think you're still- I think it's anti peakers advantage. Yeah, still by like, by like 10%. Probably. It looks like actually it does more than mitigate it. You still have the advantage while holding. We're not telling you to hold every angle just because, but we're saying you might be able to. As long as there is a long distance multiplayer gaming, there's always going to be features advantage. And so having low system latency is a good way to mitigate as much of it as you can. Pro level competing on a LAN environment with low latency system, that's going to be insane because now you're like fully almost mitigating peakers advantage. All right, so this is our last test. Let's start off by explaining what are flick shots. A flick shot is essentially when you snap your mouse to a target and you're not really worried about acquisition. You're kind of just, you, you see the target and you're moving as fast as you can to said target. So are flick shots important to a game like Valorant? Flick shots are a big part of any FPS in the sense that if you're only able to hit shots within your comfort zone, which is maybe like a small field of view in front of you, you're always gonna be limited in kind of what situations you could save yourself from. So what do players typically blame if they talk about hitting training plateau? They either mention like not having good reaction time, some like hereditary reason, or um, occasionally their system, their setup, uh, their, their ping. I think quite frankly, people don't always really know what it is. I think, you know, you just kind of trial by error. So there was actually a recent IEEE publication that found that the reaction time between a new gamer and a professional gamer is only about 25 to 30 milliseconds. That's definitely in the range within system latency. So I think in this test, what we can go do is do some flicks in the range, 
see if there is a difference between these system latencies and our precision, and then try to quantify that difference by looking at our accuracy between high system latency and low system latency. Using a high-speed camera, I'll be recording where nothing pulled the trigger on each target, and using the NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer, I'll record the system latency of each shot so that we can compare the average system latency of each case. If we take a look at the 60 results, we can see you're still very consistent linearly. However, the spread, and even the closer spread, the misses, they're a little bit more yeah, spread out. the shoulders a bit. So at 144, here we are. Still a nice linear spread. You're consistent as a player. Your mouse movement is pretty consistent. At 360, it's pretty grouped around the head. That range is about six milliseconds. As to where at 60 FPS in Valorant, uh, the range was closer to 20 milliseconds of variability. Just looking at system latency, it's cool to actually see that metric versus just, hey, 360 hertz, like, what does that mean? This is just a couple tests, and it's already showing tighter results with the lower latency. What system latency represents to me now is essentially the metric for what I've felt all along. I think I've always known what smooth gameplay feels like. I just never was able to put a number to it or the difference from the previous level of smooth that I experienced. Now that I know what system latency is, I'm gonna be able to track and kind of gauge the difference of each system I play on, which is gonna be awesome. Being able to quantify system latency with the NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer is super cool not only for me to have like confidence in my own setup and to know where it's at and how it's performing, but when I go to a different setup and I wanna see how it's performing, when I compare it to my friend's computer who has maybe similar specs and we really wanna see, you know, what is this subtle feeling we're looking at here, we can actually put a number to it and gauge that and make sense of it. I think at this point, system latency is something nobody knows about and no one thinks is important. And I think we're at a stage after today where we're gonna actually be able to be able to tell the community and tell the scene why it's so important or why it matters. And I think moving forward, system latency is gonna be a big part of observing the standards at a tournament, for instance, observing the standards at your own home and raising the tides for everybody. <laughs>